now live on Instagram and Facebook. Hi, everybody. This is Sarah coming to you live from Cookie Countess headquarters. We'll wait another minute or two for people to yeah, pop on here. here yet. They're probably still <laughs> running out though. <laughs> the notification. Awesome. We're, um, you have nobody yet. It's probably the Facebook that takes us. Oh, you know what? Because the event starts at noon, so maybe that's why. Oh, there's um, one person. Thank you, Chris, for joining and letting us Hi, know Chris. that we're actually live. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All right. I've got, yep, I've got a good. We got a few. Yeah. Right, awesome. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining our airbrushing live um, today. We are going to be going over some basics of airbrush cleaning. So the things that you're supposed to do every single time you use your airbrush gun. And we'll go over some very common issues that you may run into and the quick fixes that can help get you back up and running with your airbrush gun. Um, so first, I'm just going to load my airbrush gun with some airbrush color so that we can clean it back out. So I'm just going to give this a quick spray through. Now, my gun is starting from being clean. So there were no clogs. There were no issues with this gun to start with. Um, your cleaning process will be different if your gun is clogged. So we're going to go over the basics of airbrush cleaning today. We are not going to go over full disassembly. Okay. So I have a nice dirty airbrush gun full of navy airbrush color. So <clears throat> ideally you'll be doing this next to your sink so you can just pop your gun right underneath the flowing water. Um, but I'm going to substitute in my little pour bottle here and we'll pretend. Um, so the first thing I always do when I'm cleaning my gun out is really just fill the well with color. I, don't know, I just dump it right up. Dump it right into your sink, your trash can, whatever you're next to. Just get rid of that excess color that's in there. Then I'm going to load this up with water again and just spray it through. Now when I spray, you can see there's still residual color left in the well. So we're going to spray this until it starts running clean. So it looks pretty good right now. Um, if I was using white or any of the metallic shimmers, um, these colors, the regular colors, tend to not hold a lot of residue. So rinsing with water is pretty effective. It'll run right through the gun and be gone. Um, if you're using white or one of the more residue shimmer colors, uh, you may want to invest in one of our airbrush gun cleaning kits. Comes in this nice little pouch. And they come with these little mini uh, scrubber brushes. So you can actively put this right inside your well and scrub out any residue that might be clinging to the sides. But again, the navy isn't like that, so I'm in a good position right now. Can you repeat what you said about um, if you were in a kitchen with a sink, how yeah. you would do it? Yeah, so if I was if this was my sink and I was standing here airbrushing, mm -hmm. I would simply just fill my well with water from the from faucet, the faucet okay. and then just spray it out. Now, you guys just watched me spray this out and it was coming out pretty clean. I just added more water to this well and I saw some more blue. So I know that there's still color in this gun. So we wanna do a couple more steps before we can say that this gun is clean and ready to be put away. So if I, I'm gonna keep spraying it out, there's still a little bit of blue. It's got a little bit of a Monsters Inc. color palette going on here. <laughs> I right. like it, I like it. Um, so I'm gonna pull this one out of the way so we can work with a fresh, whoop. Yeah, we'll start there. <laughs> it's fine. It's Our, fine. <laughs> um, okay. So what else I always like to do, again, if you're next to your faucet, feel free to use that to fill it up. I'm gonna use my little bottle. Fill the color cup with water and then block the front nozzle caps with a fingertip. That is stopping air from flowing out front forward from the gun. Pull your trigger a little bit and you'll see those little bubbles in the cup. That's the air being forced backwards into your color cup. Now, when I do this, especially if I think maybe I have a little bit of debris or anything, Instead of trying to spray this water back through, I'm just going to dump it right back out. Again, into your sink, into your trash, onto your paper towel. I'll do that as many times as I think I might need to, just to get any residue out from that nozzle. The reason I do this is I don't want to spray any debris that I may have loosened up back through the nozzle. I want it out of my gun. So anytime I'm making the color cup bubble up, 
I dump it out. I'll add some more water and then I may be in a good place now. Now when I spray the water, it's coming out completely clear. There's no color. Um, you always want to make sure that you check if there's color collected on your front nozzle caps. As the air and the color are coming out, it can collect on the inside lip of this little nozzle cap here. So you can use a wet, uh, damp paper towel. You can spray a little bit of water over it. That will kind of force it outwards. Dry it off with your paper towel or towel. Dry out your color cup. And this gun is nice and clean and ready to go. And I always just give it one last test just to make sure or if you can catch that airbrush mm -hmm. action. But I've got a mm -hmm. lot of really good flow here. This is nice and steady. There's no spitting or sputtering. So I know that I don't have anything clogging the way. And this gun is ready to be put away. Any questions to start? I have none. Mm, awesome. OK. I don't have any either. I think you're doing such a great job explaining. They have no <laughs> questions. Excellent. At Home Sweet like says hi. That. Hi. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's no questions about cleaning the gun on a regular basis. Um, and also, you can do that in between colors. You can do that if I'm using a residue color like white or metallics. I may do that in between, like even continuing to use that color before I reload it for another cookie. Um, say I do a dozen and I come back. I can add, I can just clean it out, make sure nothing's accumulating. Hillary, any questions? Um, I have a question from Sean on Facebook. Does it matter what temperature um, the water is? I usually use hot or warm water. Um, I just too. find it breaks the color down a little more easily, especially if it's a residue color that I'm trying to actively scrub out. The warm water works best. But again, I'm using room temperature bottle water, so it does work for those thinner colors. But if I was next to my sink, I'd be using the hot water. Mm -hmm. I Emily? have one question slash comment. Uh, sure. Someone just joined in late and said, so you don't take it apart to clean it. Um, and that's what we're going to do yeah. next, right? So no. So perfect. when you are Eventually. airbrushing on a regular basis, you should not have to fully disassemble your gun. The goal is to spray this clean, do everything you can so that you avoid having to fully disassemble your gun. The more you mess with the nozzle, the more you mess with the interior parts, the chances are higher that you're going to either damage the nozzle, drop the needle and bend it, or something's going to happen to those really tiny, delicate interior parts that we don't want to mess up. So again, if you can really do great basic maintenance on a regular basis, you shouldn't have to take your nozzle apart. Okay. Very important. Hillary. Kathy asks, I've heard that cleaning the gun with vodka is preferable. Mm -hmm. I don't. Uh, I don't. Hillary, I, I know, doesn't. I, don't. Um, I, I kind of find, especially things like Everclear, some people have told me they use Everclear, I find it kind of greasy. So I don't like to use that for cleaning it. And I haven't found that the water does not work for me. So the only thing I'll say is if you have bad water, if you know that your water tends to leave mm. like residue like fine. Very minerally. And, yes. You may want to use purified or bottled water for it. Another question here. Someone said you need a bigger nozzle for shimmers. Is that true? A bigger needle? Do yeah, so I very much prefer to use our 0.5 millimeter airbrush gun, which comes with a gold tail instead of the silver. Anytime I'm using shimmers or anything mixed with white, the colors are a lot thicker. So you can definitely see when you get them, they're heavier. You have to shake them to really distribute the pigment and make sure that that's fully all the way through. Um, so the larger nozzle on this, while it's not impossible to clog it, you start out a little bit better so that you're not immediately going to clog it necessarily. Emily. Um, somebody said, Robin Smith said, rubbing alcohol, question mark. So I think it's on the vodka. Still everywhere. the cleaning. Yeah, Honestly, same yeah, same answer. We okay. really just use water. So if you are really good about your maintenance, water should be all you need. Um, Chris says, can you show us how to change for different size needle so you can it's not a change of a needle it's <laughs> right I yeah, think people can... very frequently say needle when they mean nozzle um, and the nozzle is this tiny part here at the front of the gun so let me pull the actual needle back so that you don't see it okay so this is the needle that runs through the body of your gun 
So I'm gonna pull that out of the way so we can focus at the front of the gun, which is this nozzle, that little triangular piece right there at the front, that's your nozzle. And that is the thing that the opening is 0.4 millimeters on our silver gun and 0.5 millimeters on our metallics gun. Mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily the needle that is the difference, it's this piece right here, it's this opening that's a little bit larger. Okay. So we are not going to be changing these today because this is a basics of cleaning, but we do have some great tutorials for how to clean and troubleshoot your airbrush gun and how to replace that part on our website, on even on Facebook and Instagram in our history videos there. Okay. Yes. So Perfect. I think that answers your question, Sean, that the, 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 um, the gold one, the 0.4 is the larger. Yes. The, the, yeah, that we the gold separate. is the 0.5. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. 0.5. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is still separate. <laughs> and I always have one of these on hand. First of all, you can use it for regular colors too. So worst case scenario, you have an extra gun. But also, if I am going to use a, a, res, a residue color like the white or the metallics, I don't really want to clog my standard go-to gun. If there's going to be a clog, I want to have it in an extra gun. <laughs> This is a good point. So, um, Denise says, uh, you are excellent with your training. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and um, another compliment. Susan says, this is my second airbrush live event. I'm no longer intimidated by my airbrush. I'm unpacking it today. That's awesome. We love hearing that. <laughs> yes. Love that journey for you, Susan. Yeah. Emily. Um, Katie's Cookie Dart says, her nozzle is on so tight she can't get it off. Do you have any suggestions about how to get it? The nozzle is on so tight. So you're using the little wrench to try to get it off and we just can't. Um, yeah, don't throw away those little wrenches. Yeah, the, so the wrench that comes with it is really key. The only thing I can think, what my instinct to say would be, is that maybe color has been allowed to dry around the nozzle. And so like when we go through this big cleaning event that I just did, um, if maybe you didn't get all of the color off and it now is acting like a glue and a cement holding that nozzle in place. Gotcha. The only way to get it off was with that wrench. So I would really give it a try. Worst case scenario is that the, the nozzle does break off. We do sell replacement nozzles. I can certainly always help you through replacing it if you need help. Okay. Thank you. Um, I've got one more question yeah. over here. Kathy, and I can help answer this too. Um, why is she says a larger PSI gun? Why is it better? So I think the PSI refers to the um, the power of the the air spray. So okay. the Royal Max, um, it does uh, it does help give a finer spray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So she's asking that. So this okay. Hillary's gonna laugh at me. She's never heard me give this example before. Ooh, this wait. is <laughs> this is the analogy that I always like to use. So. If you have a mouthful of water and I tell you to spit it out fast, it's going to go far away from you faster in smaller drops. If I then say, okay, now spit a mouthful of water out slowly, it's gonna dribble all over you. It's gonna be larger drops because you can't control the air as much, right? So same thing with your compressor. The higher the airflow, the higher the PSI, the finer those drops are going to be and you're gonna get a much more even result. So that's why that PSI mm -hmm. is more important. Um, and then as Hillary said in her live last week, you control the amount of color that's coming out of your gun with the trigger, not by turning the knob down on your compressor. That's a great <laughs> analogy, I love that. <laughs> that's fabulous. Do you do anything specific to dry it or just air dry? You can pat it dry with a paper towel, um, I mean, you don't really have to do anything special to dry it. It does. You're going to remove all the water from it anyways, essentially. So, you know, you can give it a shake, get, right, I think shake as much water. Yeah, no, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be an issue. It's good to remind people too, that there's no actual electronics in the that gun itself. Correct. Air so is only... running into this hose, but there's no color coming through here. There's no, nothing electronic on here. So as long as your compressor is not near your water, this is totally fine. Right. That's why you can put the whole gun exactly. under. Yeah. Faucet. And I do. I'll just stick this right under my streaming faucet. I'll let the water hit the front nozzle caps and it does. It spritzes off a little as the air is coming out, but it gets off any residue that might be collected inside this nozzle cap. Um, and the goal is to really remove as much color as possible. Now, understanding how the airbrush gun works, as I said before, the needle does run fully through the gun. So when I pull, I'm going to actually take this cap off again. The needle 
runs fully through the gun, through your color cup, and comes out the front here through the, the head of the nozzle. Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Um, so when I pull the trigger back and forth, you can't see it really because uh, it's like an optical illusion, but the needle is moving back and forth in this color cup as well. So we clean the color cup, we clean the nozzle, we clean the nozzle caps, and then if you go back and your gun is still showing residue color, it's probably because it's on the needle, because the needle is moving back and forth. So you can just take the needle right out without taking your nozzle off, just gently pull it backwards. This, although this was clean when I started, I'm just going to give it a wipe. And there's still a little bit of residue on here. So I'm just going to get that nice and clean. And now I can put it back in. And again, I have not taken my nozzle off. Let me put, push that back in. And now I'm good to go again. So just a reminder, we're not going to um, fully take apart the gun in this, in this live. We do have really good videos mm -hmm. on that. That might be more useful because you can pause and rewind. Um, but we could do that at another day if someone needs to. Yep, absolutely. Um, this one is really just a matter of everyday maintenance of your gun. And again, you should not every day have to take the nozzle off. Take Every single time you use your gun, you're not taking the nozzle off. You're not taking the needles out necessarily. This is just everyday basic maintenance. Okay? Got Good? It. All right. So let's move on to a couple of very, very common troubleshooting issues. And I get at least one of these emails every single day. So... Um, this is a great place to start. So if your trigger is in place as it should be, when you let it go, it should pop right back into place. That's a perfectly normal operating trigger. So you'll feel the tension on it. If your needle, I'm sorry, if your trigger is flopping around and not really doing anything. Ooh, I got to really loosen this one. So if it's ever kind of floppy like that, it means that this tension adjuster is not in place the way it should be. So you're gonna remove the back cover of your gun, and then this piece right here just needs to be screwed back into place. And now once this is nice and tight, the trigger will flop or pop right back into place. So if you ever feel like your trigger is wimpy, this is probably the culprit right here. So go back in, make sure that this guy is nice and tight. Any questions about that? No, we're good. Not over here. Okay, perfect. So um, a lot of times, I want to say nine times out of ten, but maybe, the culprit really isn't the nozzle, because people will, call, will email me and say, oh my gosh, my nozzle's broken. Something's wrong with my nozzle, my gun isn't spraying. And a lot of times it's not the nozzle, it is this needle that is the problem. Um, and whether it's moving or not moving. Um, so we just tighten this nice tension adjuster, which is great, but say we in moving all of this stuff this is called your needle chucking nut and this is what holds your needle in place so when it's tightened properly when i move this you can see can you see the needle moving back and forth mm -hmm. okay when this is tightened properly that's what that'll do if i have had to take my gun apart even for a deep cleaning or just basic cleaning if this is loose when i pull the trigger the needle does not move anymore can you see that Yes, mm -hmm. just the chucking nut. Is yes, moving. exactly. Just the chucking nut. So. so what that means is that the needle is still fully in place all the way at the front of the gun. And when I pull the trigger, the needle is not moving out of the way to let the color go forward. So people will say, oh, my, no my nozzle is broken. Nope. The needle is just not getting out of the way like it should. So again, you're going to take your back cover right off and then check this right here. If this is loose, then you're gonna make sure that your needle is pushed all the way forward, give that a good tighten, and now you can see the whole thing moves again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. Now the third and final thing that we're gonna talk about, which is probably the most common email I get, still relates to this needle, this culprit right here. <laughs> um, so again, if you took your gun apart to clean it, or even just in general use. These are all little tiny internal moving parts. So things loosen up over time and it's perfectly normal to have to make this adjustment. If you find that your gun is spraying color without you actively pulling the trigger, it just means that this needle is not in the correct position. Again, when it's at rest, it should be all the way forward so that it blocks the color from being able to go forward. If it has moved backwards a little bit and isn't able to push its way all the way forward, 
then when the air is on, it's also going to pick up color and allow it to escape through that little gap. Okay, so you can see it. I'll get a paper towel. We'll do a quick little demonstration. Okay, so you're going to purposely. So make it I'm going to purpose. Yeah, I'm purposely. I loosened my needle chucking nut. I am going to move the nozzle back a little bit and then retighten this so that it does move. I do want it to move. Um, but what you'll see when I load it with a drop of color and move it back enough. Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't <laughs> what did I do? Uh, it'll spray color without pulling the trigger. Let's see. Well, now, now I might have to actually take the gun apart. I think you as fixed I it. <laughs> <laughs> I fixed it too much. It hurts your soul to put it in the wrong position. I think. <laughs> While you're doing that, um, oh no, sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, someone wants to clarify: air is escaping, but no color spraying. That's the needle chucking that. Air is escaping. So air will always flow through your gun, no matter what. Mm -hmm. So as, if your compressor is on you're always going to feel air coming forward. Mm -hmm. But if you pull the trigger and no color is coming out, just check that your needles in, is tightened in place, okay? So the chucking nut. Has exactly. Yeah. By the yes. chucking nut, by that little triangular nut. All right, let's see if I can. Okay. So when I hold my gun close to the surface, you see nothing comes out. If I loosen this chucking nut and pull it back a little bit, color starts to flow immediately without me pulling the trigger. Mm -hmm. So to fix this, just open up the back of your gun again, push this all the way forward, and then retighten your chucking nut. And now you'll see nothing is coming out again. So some of these things look like panic moments, like, oh my gosh, my gun is broken. And really, it's just a quick tune-up to get your gun back into action. And I think just to circle back yeah. to why you don't necessarily need to take your gun apart at every usage, because most of these these other issues come up when you don't put it back together the right way. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, I've gone years without taking a gun apart because I just clean it properly mm -hmm. after use. So if you don't put it back right, then you run into these other issues. Exactly. What other questions do we have on Facebook? That Those are the three main things I know yes. Sarah wants to cover. <laughs> yes. So those were my, my, the most popular things that people email me about consistently. So thought those might be the most helpful for you guys. <laughs> I have no more questions on Instagram. Okay. No, no more over here. Shelly says, thank you all for your information. You're and um, we're going to, next week. Yes. Hillary will be back here on this side of the table next week. <laughs> she's going to do an airbrushing live, and she's going to do airbrushing basics. So, yes. Wait so, a little bit more about just. Um, so we'll kind of work backwards a little bit, but um, a little bit more basic, yeah, about the mechanics of the gun, some more information about that, and just how to get started mm -hmm. and get comfortable with your airbrush gun. Perfect. Emily, you had one more question? Um, on someone just wants to know where they can find the correct uh, paint and colors to use. So if you and go on our on the cookiecounters.com, we have our own line of airbrush colors. Make sure that you get the airbrush, um, not the gels, because we do have matching gel colors. Although pick up both because they're great and they match, <laughs> but make sure you only run airbrush color through your gun. Yes. All right. I do have a couple more questions. Sure. All right. Let's get to that. Kathy <laughs> says, how long can you leave the color in the well before it becomes a clog issue? So with the thinner colors, it's not as much of a, I try not to do it at all. Of course I'm human and I walk away and I'm like, Oh, let me go do a detail on that cookie. And then I'm 15 minutes later. I'm like, Oh crud, that's still sitting in the color cup. The regular colors aren't as much of an issue, but if you let white or metallic sit in your airbrush gun for some time, what happens is, again, when you use any of those colors, you have to shake this bottle to distribute everything evenly. So as you let it sit in your color well, they start to separate, and those thicker, heavier pieces are now settling right towards the bottom, right towards your nozzle, and that's when you end up with clogs. Uh, someone wants to know uh, if this video will be available to watch again and yes it will be and um, it'll be posted to reels right after this and we're going to upload it to youtube and we'll post it on um, our story too um i had one more question uh can you buy a just a replacement nozzle yes absolutely so if you type in depending on which gun you want if you want the 0.4 millimeter gun or the 0.5 
if you type in um, 0.4 or 0.5, it'll bring you up all the replacement parts and the guns for those two um, styles. So you'll just pick the piece you need from the little menu and just make sure you're getting the just that piece. Mm -hmm. And you'll be good. It comes with a needle, a nozzle, and a wrench, just in case you've lost yours. Perfect. We can always link you in the comments afterwards also, Shelly. Um, Michelle says, this is such valuable information. Love your tutorials. Thank you very much. You are very welcome. All right. Well, let's leave it there. you have any more questions? Oh, okay. Right. Awesome. Good. Thank you guys for coming. And Thank Hillary, you, we'll see Sarah. you guys next week. You're welcome. Bye.